This has been an amazing adventure. I'm, I'm just so excited. I wasn't sure what to expect. I had low expectations for MIBR. Um, and this has just been a, a really, really cool adventure. So if you've missed the other maps, you should go watch them afterwards, because it's really been fun. But now we're in this one, the third and final map. It is Inferno, and Inferno and MIBR are teach two things you've not wanted to see in the same sentence for a really long time. So let's see if this is going to be the deciding difference. Let's see if they figured it out and if they could do some damage here. They're certainly a much more fun team to watch right now, and it's been an enjoyable experience. It's going to be Astralis on the T side, MIBR on the CT side, and they are ready in case it's B for sure. That is the, the hope right now. We've seen this actually used by quite a few players. The duel is up close at Banana at short wall, but uh, doesn't actually pull off anything this time. Astralis just go for the peek for information. Managed to pick that up at least. Glaive going to set himself up. Unfortunately, there's a nade. Needs help from his teammates, and Magus is going to save him. Leo overstepping a little bit there. That ends up costing him, and now that's a site under control here for Astralis. You had a very, very tricky retake. The one smoke they had, they just used for middle, so they can't even really smoke for any kind of a defuse, and all the way out, K and G, though, that will do a lot. That's the bomb down on the ground. Can he hit one more? They're gonna triple team him instead. It seems unfair, but it'll definitely get the job done. Turning around his Magus, and the Glock will go to work, taking down TRK and Lucas, so working on a quad kill at the moment of Dupree to steal the ace at the end, but it doesn't matter. Astralis will win the pistol. But it could have worked out a bunch of different ways. And yeah, you do you do flip a coin sometimes in pistols. They said B, and we're going to go A, and it's going to be a difficult retake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. But um, what we need to see here, and that's maybe why Leo, for example, goes so hard on that peak in mid after Glaive, is we need to see the aggression out of MIBR that works for them on Nuke. They are oh, fighting yeah. hard on Nuke. They're really hitting Astralis where it hurt. And you need to see that from MIBR if they have if they stand a chance of winning this best of three because that's pretty much their winning scenario, yep. is hitting shots and winning duels and playing a puggy style that's just going to rely on them getting headshots. Yeah. If they don't get that, I don't think they win versus Astralis. So you need to see them trying to make plays. And well, it didn't work out for them in the pistol, but um, let's see. Let's keep an eye on things. Obviously, going forward. I think Leo peeking in the middle was, was a perfectly reasonable idea. He just didn't hit the shot. VSM, on the other hand. Definitely connecting with Magus face. Grenade. That's a good idea. I wish they had more than just the one HE, but they do have a lot of smokes. Uh, no, no, one flashbang on TRK. How good can a flashbang be? Uh, they're actually quite far away, so maybe we won't even find out, but I'm going to say if you put up the smoke. Oh, okay. Dupree peeking before the smoke pops. That is never really advisable. But now. Let's see, TRK has the flash in hand, he's just let it go, and they're gonna come running through. That one flashbang is gonna set it all up. If, they, if that can't work, they're not gonna get anything done here, and yeah. They, I don't even think they made it through the smoke, I'm not sure why, they must have been counting that down. Maybe the th smoke was just much thicker than they realized, it seemed like there was sort of a double layer of construction. Regardless, that's gonna be the round for Astralis. I think they had just that one chance, really. Yeah, they had to make the play there, but they made this a little bit more expensive. Device survives with 3 HP. Calculated. <sighs> That is close, but uh, that is so important for Device that he holds on to that AK. Pretty sure Zip could have been able to pick it up anyways, but uh, saved gear, saved money going into this round for Astralis, and again, a strong start for Astralis. Two rounds on the board. This is Device's perspective as MIBR tried to play around that smoke. It just didn't work out for him whatsoever. So Device on the board with two. And well... A little bit of nervous relief, I think, on, on Megas' face day. It's like, ooh, okay, well, I guess we want it. Yeah, they're fragging hard, man. That's, it's, when everybody's hitting shots, it's scary. This time, Megas is going to get this. He gets uh, revenge. Takes VSM down immediately. Device with the spray and pray. Takes Leo, and two-man yeah. advantage now for Astralis. Leo really just wanted that deagle. Yeah, you know what? Right. please. Well, dude, that shot he hit last round, that was, uh, that was clean. Yeah. He's like, whatever it takes, I'm going to get my hands on this. Even if it's the last thing I do. Mm -hmm. I'm liking this pace here from Astralis, though. Anti-eco round. They know it's not going to be much of a buy coming in from Brazil, so they go for the bully. Straight up banana. Just swamp them. With superior firepower. And now you can actually just put your, your two SMGs in um, fragging positions and get the AKs set up to just save into the next round. If you're Astralis, you can see Dupree kind of keeping an eye here on Banana. You don't want to let Made in Brazil take control of this part of the map. 
in the meantime, Zip Mix is clearing out CT spawn, leading the way for Device. We should have a situation here, yep. That was a bit too scary. But they should be able to save everything here. Yeah. Wait, what? Can they save that AK? No, no, no. Glaive gets it. It's close. Really close. I... Yeah, I mean, I, th I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, that was definitely... Had you lost that AK, I mean, that's... Really, uh... That would have been extremely expensive. Yeah, just an, un an unnecessary loss of money early on, right? Don't want to be doing that. But here we go. KNG. So many opening duels on Nuke that it really gave... I mean, it gave MIBR so much to work with. He's got it again here, and I don't think KNG is the kind of AWPer that is going to care at all about the fact that we're on Inferno. I think he'll be doing just fine with the slightly closer, you know, quarters combat that's going on on this map. I think he'll be fine. Mm, he is lacking head armor, which is only really relevant against that MAC-10 on SIP, but sometimes that's exactly how it plays out, right? You run, we're running into the one person that can actually be really annoying. He's going to be fast and jumping and all the rest of it. Anyway, uh, Bomb is all the way back there uh, towards T-spawn. So right now, Astralis, this is just all about map control and... I can really have that kill. All right. But yeah, they're just, they're just pushing them back. They're just establishing control on Banana. Then they're, they're establishing control over at the A Apartments. So I like the fact that MIBR are looking to retake. This is really cool. Flashed in and Device is dead. That is a simple maneuver that, again... You, re you really rarely see uh, people do. I mean, they all line up, I think, never managed to do this, really. So, it's super effective. Because now, Astralis are thinking, well, okay, well, great. Now, we, we we spend all that time to get that control, and Device was placed here to keep the control as we were doing something else. And now, you have to improvise in the last 30 seconds, and here we are. They're going to be running back to the B-bomb site. It is kind of low on defense. That smoke is going to be really annoying. So, VSM and Leo, oh no, he's shooting his teammate. Definitely don't want to be doing that. VSM, though, good spray, but that is... That would have been a chance for in a half. It can still be done here. Leo, though, he's not guessing the angle. If they could have stopped the bomb, it would have been so dual. But it's still a three on four, and I'm sure they're going to be tempted to do this. They don't have any grenades on either side, but here we go. The first really important round here for MIBR. Time to get on the board if you're MIBR with a man advantage like this, but you do not have any nades, as you pointed out, Anders, and that is going to make life very difficult here for MIBR. Zipnix turned away, expecting the flash. Unnecessary. Dupree is going to be his first point of contact, though. There's the bait. Nicely done by Dupree. Opens it up. KNG not even be able to peek behind it. They know where Lucas is coming from, and it's Dupree laying waste. My God. Three kills for Dupree. He holds the line. And Astralis stand tall. 4-0 on the T side. MIBR going to have to take another round. Uh, well, Ego and Kicking. Yeah, that is annoying. And uh, Dupree had been, he'd been out towards Banana, so he knew that no one was coming there. He played that so well. That shot on <laughs> KNG was, um, was really good through the coffin. This is funny for Zip as well as turned around. Like, yeah. Anytime now, there's going to be a flash coming in, and this will all be worth it. Luckily for him, Dupree hits all the shots. Yeah. No flash ever came. But yeah, that was um. But it's hard to even blame MIBR going for that retake. Like we talk about that a lot. Sometimes we'll say, "Oh, they should have done that. Should have saved." They're, they're four on three, right? They're, they're, it's their first rifle round. I can't even really hold that against them all that much. Nice attempt with a little jump boost uh, to get up there. And a nice shot. There's Leo in action. Dude, Leo is just slaying with these deagles. Yeah, but him and TRK and the, they just have. They just have a lot of firepower on this MI. At least for now, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely. I mean, it's what's keeping them in this game. It's really what Astralis are having a lot of trouble dealing with, I think, right now. It's just these peaks that are coming out, and you're just seeing insane rounds from guys like TRK. I mean, Leo now with this Deagle is just proving to be fatal. And so, yeah, Astralis, they have to find an answer to these random aggressive plays coming in from MIBR. Nicely done. Peeking together there. Magus can do free. Managing to clear this B-side defense. So they will get a bomb plant. And that is so crucial that they managed to work in together like that. It really looked like Dupree was about to sit right in front of Magus yep. and, and cause a lot of trouble. But yes, this is... You know, did they police the rifles? No, they didn't police the rifles, did they? No, I don't think so. So, um... I mean... 
It might be R. Sucks when you get those early kills, you can't win the round, but I think it's it's still better to save the AK here and see what TR AK can do. They have definitely spotted each other, I think. Yeah, Sip just out there looking for him. So it will be a fifth round for the Danes. That is pretty nice. Yeah, there we go. Started to throw them away. It's too late, but it's all about, I guess, the idea. Mm -hmm. Holding on to that. Lucas going to have that AK in hand. And we are going to go into the sixth round, where there will be a lot more money on the MIBR side to, to play with. They didn't, I mean, this is kind of a rough, this is the cl sort of classic rough start you can get on, on the CT side of almost any map where, you know, you lose the pistol, you have your first rifle round, you know, you sh smack down, and then here we are, 5-0, and oh, and suddenly, yeah, you know, this is your second chance. So this is a strolled out memory lane. It used to be much more common. Yeah. Now, uh, with the new economy, with how things work out, I mean, you have just all sorts of craziness, but uh, yeah, it used to be, it's like pistol and then buy, and... That goes against you. Oh, there you are. And while the vice catching Leo getting so aggressive at Banana. I don't really know about that. This is the thing. I mean, this is where it can it can work wonders for MIBR. If they're hitting all their shots. But it can also come back to bite them if they get so aggressive that Astralis just start to play into that, expecting it, just holding angles, right? Which is kind of what Astralis were trying to do on Nuke a lot of the time, it felt like. Yeah. But he was also running the whole way, so like they would have heard him, and there was no distraction. It wasn't like anyone was like, uh, you know, there was no grenades in middle being thrown, no pushes from his teammates in the middle. I don't know. Maybe communication coming in from his teammates in mid or second mid, saying, "Hey, we, you know, they're coming up here quick." Ah. Miscommunication always possible. We yeah. will, we'll, we'll, it's a mystery unless we have uh, one of those mystery. mic'd up moments where they go back to the beginning of this round and we can get some get some info on that side. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to roll with it. We're just gonna have to roll. That's a good point. Yeah, it is a little bit of a mystery, for now at least. Forty seconds, and Astralis again. Very similar protocols. You'll notice taking over Banana now, taking over A apartments and clearing out middle. This is the standard template for a bunch of different tactics on this map. So there's no surprise to him doing it over and over again. And MIBR are kind of blind. They're really far back on the map. Um, over at Arch is like the, f the most forward position, and even he's fallen further back. So, Lucas, strong kill. 15 seconds on the clock. Molotov down towards him, and he's going to get shut down. TRK, it's all on him. Oh, and maybe not quite. KNG still here. I didn't even realize, and that's going to be the kill, and that's going to be the round. They can't win it now. VSM just has to stay out of sight. Oh, what a save. I thought KNG had run away from that position. That's what I saw on the minimap. That's why I said he was, you know, he was vacating Arch, and he came back just in time. Otherwise, I don't think they. I don't think TRK could hold that for, you know, six seconds alone against three or four members of Astralis. What a turnaround! Uh, I'm surprised that Astralis running the clock down that low. Yeah, me too. They really, really took their time with it. Again, probably just expecting MIBR to be overly aggressive. So these guys in Astralis are getting conditioned to just wait for peaks, and that's costing valuable time. When they should be moving forward, they're sitting waiting instead. Yeah. And, um, you know, that'll come back to bite you. Eventually, Astralis, you just kind of have to bite the bullet and get in there. It's actually very true that we, we've seen that earlier in, 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 some, in one of the other groups, right? Like sometimes you just, you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and you don't ever get the fights that you want and suddenly you've just realized, oh wait, those are just 40 of my seconds. That's yeah, fun. exactly, exactly. Well, that's, I mean, MIPR, regardless of the reason, they are now going to be very pleased. They are on the board. 5-1, to one, Astralis in the lead on the T side. Well, that's a very hard-fought one round for MIPR and obviously they're going to be hoping to get a second one here. Buys on both sides, device all the way up to top banana, and well, they have no idea that VSM, uh, VSM is alone, and Leo has no idea that his mate's about to get lit up. The whole bomb side is open. They hear that shot on CT. This has got to be telling Astralis that the bomb side's clear if they hear that spray coming in from CT side. Yeah, you think it should, but they are really being quite measured. I think they probably know, but I think Astralis have just adopted sort of a don't rush it, don't do anything crazy, don't don't fall for it, just. You know, we have a plan, slow and methodical here, and we're just going to keep going. And it's working out so well for them at the moment. Obviously, the timing the time is, is just ridiculous uh, for VSM to go down, but still, they take full advantage, but they also don't just get ahead of themselves. This is way more like the Astralis that we're normally used to seeing, that we haven't really been seeing so much on the first two maps, but this does feel like feel like a little bit more dialed-in version of Astralis here on Inferno, which is very bad news for MIBR, obviously. Yeah, MIBR are not pleased about that one bit. 
And uh, if that keeps up, it's definitely going to make life harder, more difficult for themselves. And if they have to start trying to set each other up as well, instead of just relying on aim, I think this is where we're going to start seeing MIBR really struggle in this first half. So let's see how consistent uh, they can get. This is, we're staring down. Uh, actually, I wouldn't be surprised to see MIBR force into this. 3600 on TRK, you could drop an M4 and still get some moves. Yeah, it's tempting, right? Because you want to put an end to the madness here. You yeah. don't want to get them up to 7-1. But, um... Ooh, but it's looking like discipline. <clears throat> it's looking like they're going to keep their cool. Yeah, there kind, of, I mean, kind of is no, I think, right call to make in this point in time, right? It, it is a little... There's a little bit uh, a little bit of art involved in it, so... Gotta, gotta do what feels right, I guess. Maybe would have wanted to, to peek down. See, that, that kind of push that I think they were trying to set up there is what I thought they would have done earlier when Leo was pushing Banana, right? That would have made sense to try and pincer the, the top of team mid, which people sometimes do. But now for an A and on B alone with the AWP is KNG, which is totally reasonable. The three going down, some nice spam with the Deagle from Leo. I don't know how you caught him, but did. Yeah, that's crazy that he actually gets that kill. And that's so little information for Astralis. It's not like Dupree spots multiple bodies over there when he goes down. He just gets shot through a pixel of a door frame. He has no info to give him. So there's the flash, the peak attempt. Leo trying to make a hero play here. And things are not shaping up nicely here for Astralis. They're going to be under pressure. Yeah, they are. Although, there's going to be a tough choice to be made. Oh, now he's got some backup over B. I was say. YOLO B at this point if you're Astralis. Right? That is... You got nade superiority, just go B. Yeah, that's the... Definitely the most common thing, but you got to think about the fact that MIBR don't have any grenades at all, and if they smoke coffins, which people t typically do, then K and G, what does he do? Does he try and fight it? It actually feels like they're sort of gravitating the other way. Oh, worst case scenario. Maybe. They're stepping away from the AWP, so that can help them out a little bit. We'll see. Three people defending. Not the best amount of weaponry either. There's the smoke down towards Pit as well. 23 seconds, and they're gonna go for it. Glaive checking the hay cart. The timing is almost unbearable. He nearly caught him right then and there, turning the corner into the bomb site. They're not seeing anyone, and again, they're so low on time right here. Leo going down, and the entire bomb site is evaporated in the space of three seconds. I can't believe it. I'm literally just holding my breath that entire time. I, th I, I thought if anyone from MIBR start this fight, but instead Astralis started all of the three fights, and that is, that's not going to be quite good. That is, it's games within games, Anders. Now they have, now MIBR are realizing that they're over peaking, and so they're trying not to peak. But Astralis are still waiting for them to peak. But it's and also, now it's just, <laughs> it's also so hard to blame MIBR because they're looking at the clock, saying what nine seconds? You know, yeah. If I can stay alive for another second, and they like, if anything goes, it's, it's, and they're true, like they're right in that analysis. If Astralis screw anything up in that. If there's one player that takes like a little bit too long to kill, then there is no more round. You know, they're just gonna run out of time. So uh, but there, Andrews you summed it up nicely. I know. If Astralis make a mistake. Listen, they've made plenty today. <laughs> so but but this is looking better. It's definitely on the on the up and up for them. Magus is up at ninety three. Astralis overall at seven to one. Oh yeah, I mean this is that's definitely the case right now that uh um, it's just been absolutely brutal. There are not many kills for uh, MIBR. You no, know, some of the things that they were really enjoying earlier, including obviously KNG. Oh, oh, nice! Fire spilling down on top of him. Ba -ba -ba. <coughs> oh, yeah, banana control remains for MIBR. Double AWP play. And there it is, KNG catching Zipnix. That second mid, the spot from KNG getting aggressive with that smoke down, no way for Dupree to trade the frag. So it's man advantage, and there it is. The second AWP rings out. BSM picks up two kills. And Astralis now left in the dust. That's a tough one. Seven rounds on the board for Astralis right now on their T side. It's still a single round for MIBR, but they're about to turn it into two. They're about to double that, in. It, I mean, it, it's got to start somewhere, right? Just got to keep going from here on out. And again, see how MIBR do when they start to build the economy. They haven't, even, I think, they haven't even had all the, the Molotovs and everything else that you normally need to take banana. Oh no! Come on, Dupree taking him down right through the smoke. KNG. I don't even think he knew where he was. He just fired the gun. Is he going to be able to do it again? VSM is on the other side. 
Let's see, he's sneaking through and he's gonna catch him. This is ridiculous. Back into a two on two from a five on two. MIBR, there is no excusing it if they lose this round. They cannot let this one go. Lucas and TRK on the other side. A little bit of a grenade, but it'll land right between them. There's Glaive going down, and now it's all on Dupree. And they've got him sandwiched in. He drops down and sprays one turn, and it nearly gets it down to 12 health. But they are going to be able to win it with the kit and everything else. It is an incredibly costly round. But MIBR, keep it alive. I don't know if I can take more of these rounds, Anders. It's ridiculous. The running down the clock every single time, getting into these clutch scenarios. That's nuts that Glaive and Dupree are able to make this happen. So close. <laughs> yeah, Megan's reaction says it all. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? So close. But I mean, if you're a Strauss right now, you got to be loving it. It's It's got to come down to that close a wire, right? To that thin a wire for Made in Brazil to take a round off. Oh, Kenji. He, oh, Dupree! He massively overstayed his welcome. And yeah, Dupree is switching into Lucas, who I think was sort of pretending to cover him, but there's really almost no way that he can from that angle. Like, that, you need a smoke down or like something more than that. Now in the pit, TRK. I don't even know what level of heroism would, would bring this one home. Definitely not going to be... I mean, if they spotted him instantly, save the rest, get out of this round, and and just accept the fact that Astralis have won an 8 here. Wow. That was very well played by Device there. Nicely done. With the early spot, Leo getting chased back into CT spawn as well. VSM, is he going to be allowed to save this AWP? If he loses this AWP, that is going to be disastrous. There is not a whole lot of economy to fall back on here for Made in Brazil. Leo hanging out with the MP9, not going to survive it. Nobody saving anything. Do they save the AWP? They do not. Astralis don't save the op for device. Maybe could, maybe didn't want to. Maybe they, I mean, they've been playing most of the AKs and they're doing fine. So maybe they're saying, well, you know what? Don't really need it. Interesting. Uh, oh, the money for uh, the CT side. So wrecked at the moment. Man. I mean, it's obviously way too soon to call anything about this team and their future potential on Inferno, but... But you would have loved to have seen them put on uh, the, the same performance as we saw in the first two maps, because that was so enjoyable. Uh, yeah. But it's, again, it, I, I really can't even really hold it against them. You're a new lineup, with you're playing best of threes already. It's so hard to have a deep map pool. So I'm willing to, to throw in a bunch of excuses on their behalf. It's well, I'll, I'll just go straight to it, which is that it is so hard to maintain the play style that has got them this far. <laughs> yeah, that could also drag out. And I mean, it is against guys of this caliber, against a team of this caliber who can fall back on a framework who don't necessarily need to rely solely on fragging to get them through. Yeah, that's that. it's so hard. It's we've seen it time and time again. It's so hard to maintain that uh, that level. And so, this is Astralis about to collect the ninth round on their T side of Inferno. And MIBR kind of looking like um, they're a little listless right now. Not quite, no, you saw Kanji scratching his head that last round. I mean, that about sums it up. What, what can you do if you're not hitting headshots and you haven't had the time to build out the framework for this map? Yeah, and it, I mean, not that this is at any, by any means the only thing that's making this difference, but again, they have also just never had the money for all the grenades. Like, one of the one of the common battles that we see on this map, right, is the is the relentless grenade exchange over at Banana, where, you know, everyone is throwing Molotovs at each other, and I mean, it might be I haven't, because they haven't had them. They, you know, they've been buying rifles when they could, but it's never been that luxury of having all those things. And on CT Inferno, that actually does make a big difference on the, on the, on the Inferno uh, CT side here. Definitely does. So... I don't know. I, uh, I'm not. I'm not too disheartened by by MIBR. Maybe having some, you know, like some trouble here on a third map. I still think it's uh, it's a great showing for them right now. Uh, regardless of all of this, it takes time to build a a deep map pool for any team. Oh yeah, um, without a doubt. Maintaining maintaining a strong map pool, six maps. Yeah, it's, it's not something that's done overnight. And Koku himself, you know, going into it, has now taken over that coach manager role for MIBR, and he said that they're going to do the best that they can. But uh, you got that impression from him that you know it would be relying heavily on 
kills, right? Because you're just not going to have the time to build out the rest of it. Nice spot here for Magus. It still loses out versus VSM. Nicely done by VSM, keeping that pressure up. And Lucas is there as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, they both took a lot of damage over at Top Banana, but I mean, they've made it out. They've got the man lead. And Astralis now, still with grenades in the bank, and MIV only really have the 1 HE and the flash there on TRK. So I'm glad that they're sticking two in the B bomb site because if they lose B, again, retaking without grenades is not going to be easy. And we'll see what Astralis decide to do. It could be if they Molotov this corner that they're both standing in, that would be just a ridiculous checkmate for, uh, for, for this to be defense. That'd be too, almost too much to handle. We'll see if it's going to be coming in. One Molotov's going to go all the way in the back. And the other one is going to be fairly close to them. That's still scary. Flash is still waiting. It's going to be right then and there. But this time, they won't get the kill on top of that crate. It's Glaive going down instead. 30 seconds left. And VSM still standing tall. And he's so low on health. Free fire from Lucas. And they'll handle it in spite of the grenade advantage for Astralis. So 9-3. to three. Yes, 9-2-3. to two, three. Fantastic. It's more of a fight coming in from Brazil. They're never going to roll over. You've seen that already. They've shown that they've got that fighting spirit in them. But yeah. If they, if, they, if they somehow won the next three in a row, made 9-6, and then won the pistol on the second half... Then would you start believing, Anders? At least then it's possible, right? Like, there's a lot of ifs, but... Yeah, I mean, that, that, it can be done. Right now, you're just you're like Robert Downey Jr. You're just going, survive! That's exactly right. Right? Just, just staring at MIBR. Willing them. To keep it alive. Willing them to take out Astralis. TRK. Listen, I'm willing them for everybody who put bets in on that second map with those odds. Holy smokes. That's a good point. <laughs> well, I'm making <laughs> those, those are the people we got to think about. You're right. Uh, shout out to our wonderful sponsor, Betway. Not least because it would also be funny if everyone, you know, working the broadcast and the community are all wrong at the same time. You know, that would make it fun. Be great. I would laugh at that. But um... it would be great. And then we've got uh, Pimp, you know, the lone, the lone man, the lone gunman going for uh, G2 on his predictions. I like it. I admire that. I know. I know. Jacob. Underestimating Brazilian CS. <laughs> That's what I took away from that, too. I just instantly thought, all right. I mean, look at MIBR and what they're doing to Astralis right now. You think Fury are going to be any easier? <laughs> I don't care how good Fury is. Fury are never going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. But, I mean, he could be right. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to watch that game. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be glued to the screen watching that game. It's coming up right afterwards. 30 seconds. And, again, Astralis pushing. <laughs> he won it. He wanted to see if he could have uh, a little bit of a jump off there, but he got caught in the middle of it, and now 20 seconds. They're all blind, and inside of the smoke, they can't see what's going on. And TRK doing a wonderful job here, getting the kill and also getting some more damage in. 15 seconds on the clock. Leo nearly transferring onto it, but sip. Let's see, he's only just back. It's his first day back in the seat. This is asking a lot. Clutching one versus two, low on health. He spotted one at least. That could be helpful, but he's got no grenades. He's going to just check and see if anyone's coming from behind, and he hasn't found it. But they are grouping up. Don't be standing right on top of each other here in VR. That is not a good way to do it. And he's looking for it. Spray, and they peek him. Perfect timing between those two peaks. Well done. A fourth round for MIBR. Yeah, you kind of you just got to... Let it all go there, Zip. Tall ask for anybody to make that one happen, given you were at half HP with no utility, nothing to help you out. So four rounds on the board for MIBR, showing some fight, showing some smiles too. Always good to see. And we will get timeout called by Astralis on this T side. So tapping that bank now, Astralis, not going to be a whole well. There will be enough for a buy round for the 15. So they're, they're fine, they're hunky-dory. Yeah, I mean, even that speaks to how this game has been going, right? That's such a luxury to have that even losing a couple of rounds in a row here, they're like, yeah, but yeah, it'll be all right. We can still buy. Yeah, it will be all right. Rich. That's who they are. Nine to four. And I don't know. Step in the right direction. Baby steps and all that. Maybe door is open behind him just into a dark void. But he, he stands in the light, Anders. I know. He sits. Someone should Photoshop some eyes into that door or something scary. Like, <laughs> why you gotta do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Bottom 
of mid. All grouped up. Maybe a little bit too grouped up. Just in case of grenades. But no one is throwing any. MIBR still don't have that many. I don't think they've even used it. Again, I just don't think. But they must have had enough money, yeah. So I guess they did. Maybe they did just use them much earlier on than. At least I would like. Three minute B. Pushing forward, trying to reclaim top banana and VSM. Caught on the wrong side of the Molotov, felt like he had to go for it, and he got shut down. KNG will get a bit of a flick in there, but Leo has gone down. He's alone here. This is all on KNG right now. Under a minute, and he's going to have to fall back. That Molotov will do nothing at all. Let's see if he can do it. That's so close, isn't it? He nearly had it. He's trying for the no scope everywhere, but not connecting. And now it becomes, I mean, every shot like that is super dangerous. Bomb down. And Stralis with a chance for a 10th round here. A very good one as well. Device has got a Molotov. He could use that to buy more time. And I don't know what they're going to do against it. Yeah, there we go. Going to be going down towards construction. That'll hold two people back. They get some kills, but yeah, they're running through the flames. That's how much they want the round. K and G next in line. One versus two. Turn around for it, but can't get the shot. And I think he knows surely that the time has run away from this round. And he's going to be going down. Device will pick him up. 10 rounds on Astralis. Man, there's a world where Kanji hits that shot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, what was that? The attempted retake through the molly. That was a sick play there. Nice attempt by DRK, but he just couldn't get out fast enough. You can't doubt that commitment to, to winning these rounds, right? It's like, you know what? Uh, it's, it, they, 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 go, they don't go down without a fight. No. For sure. They're, they're given every ounce they've got right now made in Brazil. It's really sick to see. Astralis are having to dig deep, but Astralis, it's just, there's too much experience, too much comfort right now. Magus picks up two, manages to survive as well. Man advantage now for Astralis. This is a big buy round from Astralis, but Made in Brazil are having to tap their entire bank. And this nade doesn't do nearly as much as I thought it would, but uh, still, every bit counts. counts. Yeah, every bit counts. And regardless, I mean, this was, this was kind of an all-in for, uh, for MIBR to fight for Banana, right? They had four people there. They were expecting to swing wide and just take that fight. And the first swing was, I mean, he was so quick with that shot, Magus, that there was no chance to follow that up with anything. Lucas, Deagle, yeah, you can shoot right through that. Walls are paper thin up here. The drive-by. Yeah. Pull your socks up. Oh, but Dupree had, I don't even know, I got that. How did he get that? That just reminded me of Snatch so hard. <laughs> Pull your socks up, Abby. It's been a while since I've watched that. The uh, fact that my gun says Desert Eagle 0.50 <laughs> should precipitate your balls into shrinking. Listen, this, that, uh, that movie is a classic. That movie is so god tier. If you have not seen that movie, go and watch it. There's some good music in that movie. Absolutely. Dude, it's wild. That movie is so good. Snatch. Go and see it. All right. TRK. And uh, not for long. Device puts him out of his misery. 11 to 4 at the end of the first half. T side for Astralis really getting the job done here on Inferno. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will see. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Astralis and MIBR. It is down to the final half in this best of three. And it's been a crazy ride. I really, really missed this kind of Counter-Strike. Now, it might not be fully living up to this last map yet. We just don't know. But the first two maps for MIBR were really fun to watch. And Astralis were looking a little bit wobbly. Weren't looking quite like themselves. Although on this map, they've been looking way better. So I think MIBR, they might have hit the wall. Unless they can turn this around and win this pistol and go on a huge streak. They're running up the middle. It's a good crossfire setup. Device, though, he's only going to get that one kill. And Magus, that's a good tap. He needs another one, and he'll get it as well. And just like that, it works out. Though, a cruise into it. I thought he could make it away. KNG was so fast and somehow found the shot. And just like that, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. They all died, similar within the space of, what, like five seconds. And Zip is just wishing he didn't have a whole bag of utility right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, my kingdom for a kit or some Kevlar in this 1v1 fight. Yeah, against the Glock, that's a problem. Yeah, what is he going to do now? I mean, sit and wait, really. If a bomb gets planted A, cool, he's in position. If it gets planted B, uh, well, sucks to be him, right? So right now, it may very well be that Kanji's going to oh, walk oh, right oh. into Zip and accept it. Unbelievable! Turns away as Kanji. That it could not get more CSGO than that. <laughs> Zipnix just got CSGO'd so hard.
Oh, or it's... FPS or whatever. It's just you you always have to be looking at something or turning away or second guessing yourself as your opponent comes around the corner. It's just it's a written rule. Oh, that's amazing. It's there that? when you download any FPS game in the fine print. In the, in the like user license or whatever. It is. Everyone goes through this, right? I was like, oh no, Kenji's gonna walk right into the <sighs> shot. Like, it, 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 I feel like that would be such a depressing way to uh, to end that pistol round. But um, and then it was like, hold on, I know, gotta, I gotta check in case he's rapping over here. Yeah. The, instead of watching this angle that I've been watching for 20 seconds. And obviously the reason, because he could have found a place where he couldn't, you know, get get you know tapped from both sides. But then he's so far away from either bomb site, like, or he's in the in one or the other bomb site, right? He obviously wanted to make himself, you know, close to any one of them so that he could hear the bomb going down and rotate. So that's why he was there and not, you know, in pit for for instance over at over at A because that would have been quite far away in case he wrapped the other one, right way around. So still, good news for MIBR picking up the round. It's a start now. Ooh, this could be a, this can actually be really hard for MIBR to deal with. Let's see. If they hold on to the smokes long enough here, there's one of them out that's basically forced out by MIBR throwing in that smoke, so then Astralis have to throw their own. But if they can run the clock down low, sometimes T sides here will forget about the fact that there could be another smoke in play, and they just screw up the round. And I think they're putting on so much pressure, so they're actually playing this exactly how you'd want it. Smoke goes up again, and but that's the last one, unless they can bring Device all the way over here. Let's see if they can. There's a pretty big gap there. Grenade is going to be out, and that actually does a fair bit. Device is coming in with one more smoke. He's seconds away, and there's only 30 of them left as well. Oh, but they catch him. That is a nice kill. If he could have put up that smoke, that would have been epic. Glaive is going to get two, but oh, he actually, the simple find a third. I can't believe they did that much damage. Now, can they get the bomb down? That would have been... An absolutely disgusting headshot! He gets it anyway! VSM, he's got the bomb down, but he's in a one versus two. Oh, Astralis, they're so hard to put away in these rounds. And there's the smoke that Device had picked up. VSM goes for the fight. He's going to get the one in Magus. He's got a kit and armor. He could go almost straight for it. I don't know if VSM is going to realize. Yeah, he's going to hold it in shortly the whole way through. VSM just jiggling it a little bit. And there's the headshot for Magus. Oh, my God. A couple of absolutely godlike kills coming in in this round. And Astralis will pick it up. I can't believe it. What a round. I, I, I'm just going to enjoy the replays with you guys. Glaive already, double headshot, boom. But this one from Dupree, outrageous. Wow. That is so sick. And then Megas, he just, I mean, every time. Yep, that's the reaction. Oh. I don't even I don't even know what he's supposed to do there because the way that he jiggle peeked in VSM he couldn't tell if he came off the defuse so he, the next peek he does he has to go for the wide swing the angle doesn't favor him yeah it definitely doesn't so he's got to go wide otherwise he can't see anything in the meantime Vegas is seeing him jiggle yeah it's just and he had so much time on the clock he was like yeah whatever I'm just gonna come yeah back exactly Vegas is like oh yeah cool I got a kid it's all good oh that was brutal Oh, could they? If they catch the vice, it could be interesting. There's just an MP5, and uh, there's a couple more people. I spoke too soon. They have a lot of defense here at the A bomb site. Dupree, nice headshot, and they forced up into this round here. MIBR so far haven't got what they needed from it. Nice MP5 action getting there. Oh. Pew pew! Feels like he's shooting just plastic pellets. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, it's, uh, it's like paintball or something. I like yeah, they put some time into the animation as well, right? The reload animation. I, 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 clearly, the devs, you know, they put some work in on that one. I like it. But um, this is 13 to 5 right now. Astralis are three rounds away. Oh, and uh, no bomb plan after a force means that Made in Brazil are going to be in for a bit of a tough kick in here. And yeah, they're just going to go for the force buy. That's it. All or nothing now. This is it. The Hail Mary coming in from MIBR. Deagles, Kevlar, couple of nades versus a full buy coming in from Astralis. Really cannot believe they lost that that previous round. What a round! That was mad. All right. Well, hold yeah, on. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Astralis are actually giving them maybe more of a chance to do this now that they're pushing up like this. Because yeah, if they take anyone down here, that they could at least pick up the rifles. Nice out there tickling people with the MP5. But it's the TRK to get that headshot. It's done so much damage, and there it is. Nice will finally get what he wanted, and they're gonna get the round as well. Astralis. So close at the moment. No bomb plant, not enough damage. 14 to 5 in favor of the Danes. Yeah, man. 
watching, reliving. Sip doing some damage. I, mean, I like this from Astralis, because I, I think Astralis are thinking that that's a hard ego, right? And that's why they're going crazy. Yeah. You know, that's why they're going right. super aggressive. Um, regardless, it's just the power play from Astralis. They, they've got the read on uh, on MIBR, whether it's a Deagle buy or hard ego. But this is the change of pace coming in from MIBR with that MAC-10 up top. KNG going to be able to catch him out. Glaive gets caught in the open. And Zipnix Dupree having to back off. Already forced the incendiary. Beautiful flash. Going to stumble him for just a moment longer. But this is a lot of utility getting used very early on over here towards Banana. And MIBR going to take that into account. M4 being picked up by, uh, by TRK. So, I mean, they got a lot out of that. The kill, yeah, you're right. They definitely forced a bunch of Molotovs. They themselves have two smokes, and now they're going back here. They're going to be running into the vice in the middle of the lane with the MP5. See what he could do. This MP5, again, is a, sort of a questionable weapon. He's going to win the fight. Down to the pit, though, Magus, and he is a world-class player at playing this pit position. Uh, up there with, I would say, the best of them. Um, Dupree will take down VSM. There just are some people who, who are stuck in that pit, right? Electronic over at Na'Vi. Um, yeah, I mean, who else am I thinking of? I was going to say... Oh, why am I blanking on his name now? Too late in the evening? Um, I'm curious. Uh, automatic, I was going to say. He's okay. been playing that pit position a couple of times. It's been, been a while since we've seen him really in a lot of action, but um, but he's definitely one of them. I Listen, I could keep naming players probably for a while, but there are, there are some players that are just stuck in there and, and do a great job. Specialists. Yeah. Get in the pit. Lucas... Making noise doesn't really matter that much, but he will get found. It's 15 rounds for Astralis, and, um, well, we shall see. 21st round could be the last for MIBR in this best of three. They need to win 10 in a row. There's an order sniper on device. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and say I think it's cool. I want him to take it to Banana and shoot through the wall. Let's go, device. No, oh, he's running the other way. He's not even doing it. Just the auto sniper. Look at this clunky gun. Uh, you don't see this very often anymore, do you? No. Well, HE goes sailing by and banana, no real damage dealt. In the meantime, you've got Zipnix and Glaive working as a duo over here, trying to control the area. They will. Uh, shot goes in. Device. <laughs> he just obliterates KNG. <laughs> Ooh. And, well, that's the, that's the Scar 20 in action. Now he's just going to go ahead and start hunting with them. Why not? People used to be so mad when oh! someone did this. It's going to work. He's flashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's definitely going to be comments. It's so fair, but it, but it doesn't matter. It is, there's something hilarious about it. Listen, MIBR, I don't think we're going to do anything anyway this map. It doesn't matter. It's still an amazing performance on the overall. But it will be Astralis to pick up the win. It took all three maps, but their Inferno performance was unquestionably much, much stronger. And, uh, yeah, a good win for them in the end. But I think MIBR just raised the flag a little bit for themselves. I look forward to seeing more games from them, definitely. We're going to go to a break, and then we'll have the analysts break it down afterwards. Stay tuned.